We see the presentation. Perfect. Yeah. Off you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So hi everybody. I'm Luca Marchioni from uh, Parobotics, and today I'm going to present you the work that we have been doing during the last year, more or less, about a new robot. Uh, its name is Kangaroo internally for the moment. Okay. So first of all, a short presentation about the company. We started in 2004 designing human and robots. And then the company grew, and now we are about 60 people. We have different uh, business units, so we sell robots for different sectors. Uh, we have social robots, uh, which you may be well known as uh, Ari and Tiago, that are used for entertainment, assistive robotics, and, and service in general. Then we have many products for research. Also, Tiago and the pipettes are part of this uh, uh, family of products. We have also collaborative projects. We are involved in many European projects. And, and for instance, we are collaborating also with, with Olivier, with, with Las uh, in the MEMO project with Talos. And then we have intra logistic and retail sector that are more in industrial oriented uh, business unit. So we have a uh, robot for uh, intra logistics, like mobile bases with custom accessory uh, on top for solving different intralogistic uh, issues that are, are present in industry or uh, even uh, hospitals. And then we have the retail with a stock bot for inventory taking and asset tracking. We're using RFID or vision technology. But then uh, let's go directly to the core of the presentation. So we have been amazed by uh, what Boston Dynamic achieved with Atlas, dancing and, and the jumping, the parkour-like uh, motion. So, I mean, we, we would like to do something similar, yeah. But we know that I mean, uh, it's it's really difficult. And why? Because I mean, that you need a, a really lightweight robot, but powerful, really powerful to to have this kind of uh, uh, dynamic motion and and and, and acrobacy. Uh, the hardware should be reliable and robust, especially if you want to do this kind of experiment or this kind of uh, tricks. Uh, things can go uh, bad and, and, and you can break the hardware. So you, you need something that is robust or it is easy to, to repair to. And then for sure you need an amazing control software. Yeah? So the you know, MPC optimization are a lot of tools that are becoming uh, well adopted among the community. And it's something that we are really interested in working. On. Uh, so we started asking ourselves, what are the limits of our normal robots? Yeah? And also we started thinking about, can we build a robot that can jump? And by looking at the jump motion, for instance, the squat jump, it looked like that is not really difficult in terms of uh, uh, energy requirements. So for a robot that is 40 kilogram uh, of weight and want to jump 300 millimeter, you need an average of 360 watt per leg. That is not that much with the current electric actuation system that we we know. So after this uh, first initial viability uh, study, looking at the energy involved in the in the jump, we started thinking about the the leg architecture. Yeah. So which would be the nice and perfect leg architecture for achieving uh, uh, jumping and we started looking at what others were doing and also studying what we we knew from the analysis of our robots so the red sea the talos robots and we, we more or less made some let's say categorization of robot based on how the joints and how the the especially for the leg how the let's say uh, extension retraction and swing are, are implemented with, with actuators. So there are, for instance, the, the, the configuration typical most humanoid robots use like uh, Talos, in which you have rotary joints placed uh, at the articulation or at, at the links, at the joints, sorry. And uh, so in case of a vertical motion, you have the activation of uh, multiple actuators and some of them are uh, working against each other. Yeah, For instance, imagine the hip joint and the knee joint that are moving in different opposite direction for lifting the robot up. Uh, the Atrias robot has different configuration with two rotary joints uh, at the hip, let's say that, 
when combined, they can achieve uh, extension retraction of the leg. And for the swing also, they need to be activated at the same time. So also in this case, we have multiple actuation uh, combined for achieving uh, even one single vertical motion or only the swing. Then also the mini cheetah, as the actuator uh, placed uh, close to the hip uh, swing actuators, and then a belt system is, is driving the knee. And also in this case, I mean, if just for lifting the foot, you need to combine the two actuators because otherwise the, the, the foot will move uh, on, a, on a circular uh, trajectory with only the and then also more, more uh, let's say, um, interesting uh, or uh, um, kind of different approach. One is the one that was done by Shaft, so replacing the, 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 the leg with, a, with the knee, typical knee actuator with a, a linear actuator that looked really smart, but uh, um, unfortunately Shaft uh, was shut down. Um, so I don't know now if someone else would, uh, would, would would use this kind of, uh, of system. Then there is also the example of handle, at least from what we could reverse engineer by looking at the video. So the, there is a linear actuator that is moving, attached to the, to the trunk and is a, a moving the, the femur link. And then there is like kind of uh, belt or chain system that is moving both the, the hip joint and the knee joint so that when this linear actuator is, is, is activated, the, the foot moves in a vertical line intersecting the hip joint. And this is something it, that's really interesting, meaning that with only one joint, with a, one actuator, you can have this uh, squat and, and, and motion, and, and also that the, the swing is decoupled from the, from the leg extension. Then there is also the CASI approach, in which, again, the, the actuator for the knee has been moved close to the hip uh, swing uh, joint, and there are bar linker system that is activating the, the, the knee the knee joints and, and making the, the foot, uh, I mean, the, the, the lower leg move. But also in this case, the, the, you need both actuators uh, in case that you want to only move up and down the, the, the base link of the robot. Yeah? So given all these kind of uh, architecture, we came out with a, 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 a concept in which we have one linear actuator that is in the in the animation here is uh, as, as the the thin red line uh, in, in in between the femur and the tibia and this linear actuator is combined with two bar linkage systems and it implements some a, 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 a almost perfect vertical motion of the foot that is uh, moving when the when the linear actuator is, act, is activated, it's moving in, in in a straight line intersecting the hip. And this looks really interesting because it's uh, it's providing also an architecture that is uh, suitable for moving up the actuator close to the base link of the robot, so improving inertia and mass distribution of the leg. The problem is that then you have a nonlinear transmission, and, and this is more or less the, the, the transmission. So that depends on the angle of the of, of, of the of the femur and the, how the the velocity of the foot can relate to the velocity of the linear actuator. Uh, so what we started doing collecting requirements and, and finding, looking for components, how to improve and how to achieve higher efficiency and, and, and how to design a robot that would, would be able to resist uh, large impacts because we wanted the robot to jump, to, to collide and, and to, to stably and safely land on, on the ground. So we wanted to do it with electric motors because it's what we, we know better. And uh, so we, we started uh, looking for alternative to our money drives and we, we, we selected bolt screws as, as the, the right tool for transmitting uh, the, the forces that we wanted, but also for resisting the, the impact forces that we were expecting to, to, uh, to achieve. Because for instance, for jumping, based on I mean, a, a little bit of research we did in literature and um, I know, um, biomechanics study, 
during a, during a jump and during a landing uh, motion the weight of the of, of the human is is multiplied the, the impact force is five times the weight of the of the of the person so we were ready for having at, at, up to 10 kilonewton uh, impact forces that the system should resist and also this Draw, draw, drove the design of custom load cell for uh, measuring the the forces of each actuator and then at the same time the design of new electronic boards uh, especially for overcoming such, some of the limitations that we had in previous generation of robot also uh, as Olivier previously mentioned that uh, we, we were using Elmo boards we are using Elmo boards on Talos and we are not able to inject custom controllers embed the torque control directly in the electronic that is something that is beneficial for achieving high bandwidth and 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 it is, is, is one of our main goals at the moment so this is a little bit the, the 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 overview of the robot we have 12 degrees of freedom all of them implemented with linear actuators all the actuators are in the in the let's say waste of the robot and everything is is activated by, by, by bar linkages. So we have the ankle actuators that are almost uh, on top of the of femur. Then we have the femur uh, that has a linear actuator inside. And then we have the hip actuators with, that are implemented with differential system with linear actuators too. And also the hip U again with the same model of actuator. So we have two, two sizes of linear actuators. The, the, one that is uh, larger, that is one uh, that you want to use it inside the femur, and then the 10 that are all the same actuators that are implementing the rest of the joints. So the transmission are all nonlinear. That is uh, complicated a little bit the, the, the control, but the inertia and the mass distribution is really um, beneficial uh, and, and it's really, um, uh, it could be interesting to compare the these are the sorry before going to the to comparison of masses these are the space the specification of the joints so we have uh, uh, quite uh, large speeds um, compared to previously generation of robot uh, on talos we have about six radians per second in all the joints of the legs here we we, we managed to improve uh, the speed of most of them and uh, to make clear that I mean the six radian per second of the hip in this case are is the smallest one, but given that the hip joint is not used for contracting the leg, this is more than enough for only the swing motion. Yeah, and also the torque are quite are quite good, especially because when we have differential uh, linear actuators combined and we can achieve high high peak torque. And uh, also one uh, optimization that we did, uh, thanks to the differential joints, as on the on the hip, for instance, it it's not uh, very likely that you activate both pitch and roll at the same time. So it's convenient to have a, a differential configuration that allow you to optimize weight and to and to use smaller motors for reducing the mass of the robot. And also the, 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 the main uh, component of the leg is this uh, leg length actuator. So that is really, really nice in terms of performance. We have three meter per second peak speed of the leg, the, the foot respect to the, the, the hip and one kilo Newton. So the, 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 the vertical force that we can achieve is, is quite large. This is a comparison of kangaroo and talos in terms of uh, mass and uh, height of the center of mass. So you can see here that the, the, the height of this as only that, I mean, we are comparing every, only what is on the screen. So not the, the old robot would, and, 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 and also comparing, let's say, uh, joint against joint. So in this case, the, the main differences are that the, the center of mass of the legs is almost uh, uh, 250 millimeters higher respect talos and also the the um, then the, we change a little bit the separation of the legs that you can see in the frontal view of camera so the, the feet are wider than talos but the hip joints are slightly closer that also this is a little bit helpful when you deal with uh, 
roll torques. And a comparison also interesting is the inertia and center of mass as seen from the hip swing joint. So this is a little bit for giving an idea of the moving mass that you have when uh, walking or when moving the, the leg in general. And here is a, the, in the animation, you can see that the, the inertia of kangaroo leg is like three times smaller than the talos uh, leg inertia. Uh, motor control is something really critical for achieving uh, high performance. So we, 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 we really redesigned uh, the board from scratch, uh, thanks to also the support and help of uh, um, the Audrey community is an initiative of, for open, open sourcing uh, uh, motor control driver that is also part of the, the, the consortium of the MEMO project uh, for in which are collaborating mainly LAS and Max Planck. So we, we, we also with them, we designed a new, a new generation of boards and then we customized these boards for, for the Kangaroo robot. And the idea is to embed into the, the motor control board also the force control and torque control and even the transmission so that the 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 control the control could uh, treat the joint as uh, a, a really uh, good source uh, of torque or force and for the control architecture we use ROS control so that we have uh, an abstraction of the hardware and 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 then the controllers use uh, a model of the robot in which the joints are exposed so that all the non-linearities of the transmission are embedded into those controller are, are, are not exposed and, not, and, and to, the, to the controller so that they, the controllers treat the robot as a, 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 a perfect, uh, uh, a simple joint uh, uh, model. And one of the new novelty also that we are trying to, to implement into ROS control is the possibility even to expose low level PIDs of the of the control boards to the controllers so that it's possible to implement more advanced uh, behaviors. Uh, one of the complex part of this uh, robot has been the, 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 the dealing with uh, non-linear transmission and this is because you have linear actuator that, that then generate rotational motion. So here, for example, there is the, the, in, in the schema, you could see the, the hip, an, an abstraction of the hip uh, joints, the pitch and roll, in which you have two linear actuators that are combined to realize pitch and roll uh, joints. And here you could see these are data extracted from one test bench that we have in which we are comparing uh, measurement of encoders on the actuator side that are then mapped with the transmission equation into joint space, and then we compare them with absolute encoder that we have on the joint, so to see the, that the, the tracking is good to validate the questions, the, the transmission is, is, is correct. And here, also one of the complex uh, tasks that we were trying to solve and, and, and has, has been the URTF, the model of the robot, because it's not easy to model such robot with the tools that we have uh, at moment, so in the URDF, we we had to simplify the model considering only prismatic and rotary joints, but then we model the the leg dynamics and the the, the full um, model for the inertia and, and masses and, and in, into the as a constraint of the whole body control, and then we implement the, we we ma we manage to have simulation running in gazebo and also in a custom uh, simulator we have in PAL. And uh, one of the possible future extension that we would like to do is to consider the modeling of the closed kinematic chains. And this is something that is maybe gonna be possible thanks to Pinocchio or even extending RPDL, that is the, the, the solution that we are using at the moment. And then, okay, now we have already started building uh, some uh, hardware and this is a first uh, prototype that we had for the leg length um, actuator. This is a demonstration of the transparency of the uh, transmission of the system by implementing zero force regulation. So we are closing the loop on the force of the joint and you can see that the, the joint is really uh, reactive, it's transparent, you can move it quickly so the, 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 the friction is cancelled by the, the control. 
and then a more interesting test is with the we added the weights on top for simulating half of the weight of the robot so more or less the system weights 25 kilograms so we managed to make 300 millimeter jumps and from uh, the velocity tracking uh, plot here there is a, a, a these are a sequence of three different jumps in the in the in the plots and we can see that we reach the 2.4 even 2.5 meters per seconds that are requested that take off for reaching this this height and also you could see the force measurement so here you know, we are more or less at 800 newton that are i mean a little bit confirming the theory that we had at the beginning that the during the the landing you can experience four or five times uh, the weight of the of the system another test bench that we have here is uh, the, the test bench for the differential hip uh, system so you have two linear actuators that are combined to to realize the roll and pitch joints and here you would see gravity compensation with 20 kilograms and 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 40 kilograms and 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 again the the, the system is compliant you can move it with a one finger so demonstrating the the correct implementation of the nonlinear transmission and also the 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 quality of the of the force control one more uh, the test that we did on this system is to track uh, a position trajectory using inverse dynamics controller. So, so in, in this case, we are able to, to track a, a, a chirp signal with the system uh, with 20 kilograms. And, and this also confirming that the, the, the system is, 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 is working properly. Now it's time to assemble the, the full robot and see uh, uh, how the, the full robot is behaving. At the same time, we are working in simulation for sure. So this is an example of a reacting MPC working controller that at the beginning we, we, we developed for Talos, but thanks to the ROS control architecture, we easily managed to port this controller to the kangaroo robot in simulation. So in this case here, we have uh, two example with uh, perturbation of the robot. We are exerting up to 160 Newton of uh, lateral or um, forward uh, uh, disturbance to the robot and the robot is able to to adapt the footstep uh, for keeping balance and this is something that also we are uh, looking forward to to test on the robot as soon as the robot will be ready and conclusion um, what uh, we have done. Uh, so we propose an, a novel leg architecture that looks uh, suitable for dynamic motion and, and that is really resilient to impacts. Uh, we, we believe that this robot uh, is, is, uh, is good for using uh, template models used at the research, such as linear inverted pendulum model or, or, or spring linear inverted pendulum that are mostly used in, uh, in, control, in control algorithm. The nonlinear transmission looks difficult, but can be uh, can be solved with numerical methods, and we can embed them into the the ROS control so that con controllers, world body controllers, shouldn't uh, worry about them. And we we demonstrated some of the uh, of the capabilities of the hardware in these early prototypes. In the future, what we are doing, we are working uh, hard uh, for assembling the prototype. It's already manufactured in the first unit. And we, we look forward to demonstrate the capabilities and performance of this hardware in the next uh, few months. And uh, at the same time, we are already thinking about the upper body uh, of the robot. So the, the plan is to have, by end of the year, a full humanoid robot with uh, also arms. And uh, so this is also preliminary uh, uh, results of the jumping uh, in, uh, in simulation. So this is uh, using, uh, again, the more body control that we have and tracking reac reaction, ground reaction forces. So looking forward to, to show more videos of the real robot in the future. Thanks. Great, thanks a lot, uh, Luca. Uh, that was exciting, and definitely we we really look forward to to see the realization of the of the robot uh, soon. 
uh, there are a few questions in the chat. We don't have too much time, so I'm going to ask one. But if you could, if you could yeah. answer the rest in the chat, it would be uh, really amazing. Uh, uh, one question is about the compliant uh, compliance of the of the system. Is there any uh, actuation compliance like digit or any serious no. elastic actuation? Yeah. No, that the, there are no elastic elements, but the 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 especially the leg length actuator is really back drivable. So it's the, 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 the transmission is quite transparent. So uh, we, we believe it could be uh, that there, there should be enough uh, transparency that you can absorb impacts and you can have uh, a nice behavior of the robot when you are in contact with the ground. And the active compliance, uh, so the controller can provide the, the, a, a, a good level of compliance without need of adding uh, flexibility in the structure. Understood. Cool. Uh, there are a few questions in the chat. I'm not going to I'm not going to read them because of time constraints, but please go ahead and, and answer because people start getting, uh, you know, like writing a lot of the, I think they like the design. So thanks a lot again.